So hello again and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do days 7 through 10 of the 31 Days of Tarot uh, Challenge for 2020 uh, from Ethany. And so we'll just get started. I gotta get my note back, sorry. Do, do, do. What's day 7? I think Devin, say, day 7 is... So... Tarot cards that stalked you in 2019 and why. So, actually I went back, I had a good idea of one, but I realized there was another one that was stalking me as well. And with that, I had to go back to other, um, you know, I was looking in my notebook and looking at spreads. I'm like, wow, these, and the one I knew was stalking me, had been actually stalking me a lot during the year. I did not realize that. Uh, the first one was the Five of Cups. So why would that stalk me? Um, when I did my Wheel of the Year, or my uh, year head spread, you know, for 2019, my theme for the year was the Five of Cups. And, you know, as I take that is, you know, kind of, you know, don't cry over spilt milk. Um, you have to let go of what is not doing you any good emotionally, is basically what it is. You have to let go. You have to, um, if you hold on to it, what happens is those cups, if you try to, you know, hold on to those things, those cups that did tip over, you cannot refill them with anything that's going to be useful and beneficial to you. So that is why you have to let go. And so it was just a constant reminder of just let it go, let it go, let it go. And that's where the other card comes in. Um... Now, I know some people, you know, have done it where you take your uh, date of birth, so mine's May 5th, and you look at the year and you get your card for the year. And my feeling is it does start at your birthday and goes until your next birthday. And for 2019 into 2020, um, I'm having a death year. Okay, that's fine. The year before that was the Hanged Man. And that came up a lot in the month of December. And it actually, it showed up a lot throughout the year for me and I didn't realize it. And it was just, again, a reminder to, oh, I have light being weird on my face. Um, it was just a, a reminder to, you know, step back, get a better perspective of what's going on, relax and let go of what either doesn't suit you or you have no control over and cannot change. And that's where I'm really bad. I'm somewhat of a control freak. So those were my stalker cards. Um, what tarot books did you read in 2019? Well, okay, I suck. Um, I only really read one. <laughs> and actually, I didn't quite finish it. Uh, there's some more to it, but I got the basic gist of it. The reason, and this is where it's tough for me and I have to kind of push through it, is I'm a slow reader. I always have been. Uh, that makes it very difficult to read academic books, trust me. But I managed to get a degree anyway. But because of that, I kind of just, I get really tired of reading really quickly because it's like, oh, I'm still reading this book. Oh my God, it took me like an hour to get through 15 pages. Holy shit. So I don't read quickly. I just don't. And this is what I like about this book is if you're a slow reader, the way she uh, writes does make it kind of easy on you. And that was Terra Elements by what's her name? Melissa Sonova. Now I do not have kitchen table tarot. I do want to get that now. Um, some people don't like her writing style. That's okay. Whereas she can make things kind of, kind of lighthearted. She can get very serious at the same time. And what Tara Elements basically is, um, she does different spreads based on the different elements. So fire, earth, air, water, and spirit, um, to help with different aspects of our being basically and just to kind of give a quick show I don't know if I'm late. you can kind of see when she does the tarot spreads 
um, she has them set up in a way that it cor um, it's in the shape of the elemental symbols, which is kind of nice. But she also gives, um, she goes into each spread, um, she goes into the positions of the cards, and she also gives sample readings that she has done for clients. So I think that's really cool. And that's the book I read, Tarot Elements. As for day nine, this is, I, I don't know why I'm looking. I already know what the question is because I don't have an answer for it. What was a memorable reading in 2019? None of them were really that memorable. I can't really think of one. Um, again, it was a difficult year for me just to pull out the cards and do any readings. I'm, a, I'm surprised the number of readings I did do. So yeah, which comes to day 10, which is today. Um, what decks, again, opening up the book, share some of the, your tarot decks that have been long lost in your collection that want you want to reconnect with. I could just show you my shelves because that's pretty much it. Um, I am going to be rotating decks in and out throughout the year, um, working through the decks I have and, you know, get reconnected with them, uh, as many of them as I can. But specifically, one of the things I said, which is one of my goals this year is to, uh, work with the Thoth Tarot and the Thoth based, uh, decks. So, and I just saw, uh, Rochelle's, um, uh, video of decks that she wants to connect with. And one of hers is the Thoth and she has the book of Thoth. Doo, doo, doo. Let me, now I got this book with a Thoth deck. I'll show you that deck in a second. I think this is the book she's talking about. I haven't cracked this one open. I know that Crowley can be very difficult to read. And so I suggested to her in the, um, the comments to get this book because he kind of, uh, Duquette kind of breaks it all down for you. And honestly, if you never even want to learn the Thoth Tarot, I'd get this book anyway, uh, because it'll deepen your understanding if you do Rider Waite Smith. So that's what I want to work with. So I have my little, and it's so beat up, poor little, poor little guy. I got my little pocket Thoth. Now, if you can't really afford um, a Thoth deck and you can find a pocket Thoth, I think personally, because, you know, but I am nearsighted, so it does help me. Uh, the images are clear enough on these that you can doop, 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 really get um, a sense for what's going on, unless your sight's really bad, and then you might want a bigger deck. I do understand that. But I have this thought deck. Where's my other one? Where did you go? I also have one of these. Again, this is what I got with that uh, Crowley book. $10, $10. I had to drive an hour and a half, but it was worth it. Um, unfortunately, that didn't come with all three Magus uh, cards. I didn't expect it to, but there you go. Um, the other decks that I'll work with Waller, um, with the Thoth or other Thoth based decks like the Tarot of the Spirit. I do have the companion book for this. I actually got it before I got the deck. I'm just checking my time. Sorry. Um, again, if you come across the Tarot of the Spirit companion book and I don't know where I have that. I'll pull it out. I would get it because again, um, the first half of the book before she gets into card meanings and talks about the meditations with the cards, those, um, again, will deepen your understanding of Rider Waite Smith. So it's a good investment, especially if you find these books used. What the hell? Uh, another one is, and I do love this little deck, is the Barbara Walker Tarot. You can only get it in the tin now. Um, and of course, one of my favorites that I do just love, the Sun and Moon Tarot. And if you're not a real Thoth person, because maybe you don't like Crowley, some people don't, and I get it. If you want a beautiful deck that is Thoth based, then go with the Zilch Tarot. Because it is absolutely 
Let me flip my tin over so I don't kill my deck because I'll do that. It's all watercolor, beautiful images. Um, so if you want to learn the Thoth system but do not want to work with the Thoth deck, this might be the deck for you. Maybe even Tarot of the Spirit as well because it's, again, a gorgeous deck as well. So those are decks I'm going to be pulling out. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Even though there's... Um, the uh, I Ching is used in this one. Another Thoth based deck. So those are all those. I also want to work with Marseille. Um, I do know of. Um, sorry. Oh, the kitten's sleeping. No bell. Uh, as I said before, and I got this. Um, be learning Marseille. This is the only Marseille deck I really have. I mean, I do have. Um, tattoo Terra, but I don't know how close that is to Marseille, so that is something to study and decide. I also, as I said, I got this book, so I can work with this deck, which does remind me a lot of Marseille, but at the same time, um, it also reminds me a lot of the Attila decks, <clears throat> and I should say Attila, which um, I always, I kind of mumble it and then you can kind of see how it's very Marseille-like, but it reads differently. Uh, so those are some of the decks. As for non-specific in that way for my studying, I do want to get back with this one, the White Sage Tarot. This again, this is a really adorable little deck and what's unique about it is, and I have some extra cards because that's how it came. Do, do, do. Why are these flipped over? I'm all talking to myself. Um, ugh. The cards in the, um, in the tin now and I can't get them out because cheese grater and fingernail bad could have been worse but with these she does include um, the chakras so you can work with um, tarot and the chakras with this deck so and I do think that's really fascinating and you can kind of see which chakras coming up most in reading or yeah that's kind of fun Another one. Sorry, I have a stack of decks. I'll show you this one first. <laughs> Is my Osho Zen Tarot. I do, it was one of my first tarot decks. I do absolutely just love the look. It's a beautiful deck. Um, the book is interesting, has it, different perspectives. Uh, the it's not, it's kind of its own system, but it is a great deck. I know a lot of people uh, read with it as a uh, more of an oracle deck. Whatever, one of my pet peeves. Um, we won't go into that here. <laughs> but then who am I to say really? So there's that one, and another one that I definitely will be pulling out is my Voyager Tarot, because I love, 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 love collage, and there is so much going on in every single card. that you can just let your mind just go to town and really just let it enjoy its little self. Let that intuition just come out. I've wanted this deck from the moment I saw it. So it was on my wish list for several years. And I saw it on Facebook Marketplace and only had to drive a half hour to go get this one. Worth it. 
But those are just some of the decks. Again, I'm probably going to be pulling out a lot of my decks. I have the Shadowscapes. Um, I have the Modern Spell cra uh, Casters. Again, those are some. Uh, Dreams of Gaia. I might wait on that one because, again, Dreams of Gaia is a system in and of itself. And if I'm going to be working with Thoth and Marseille and some of my other decks that really delving into that one might be a little bit more difficult. So, yeah. But that's just some of the decks I plan on working with this year. Uh, I've been watching some of the other videos and enjoying them. And it's kind of interesting. So I will see you um, again. I'm going to be making a few videos today because kids are at school. So there's none of that. I'm going to try and work on editing. I did get another deck in the mail. And I'm going to do a side-by-side. -side. Hint, hint. Uh, but that might be a day or two from this one. And show you uh, another deck that I got for a little project that I'm going to be working on throughout this year. And there you go. So, I will see you next time. Much love and blessings.